life unfolds here in many, many different ways. And sometimes it's all wonderful and sometimes it's, it's sad and, and hard to deal with. But we have the most amazing staff who, who participate for a, a small part of people's lives, um, but love and care about women and babies. So I'm the program director for a training program for maternal fetal medicine subspecialists who deal with high risk obstetrics and prenatal diagnosis. What makes me look forward to coming to work is the students. What really excites me and what really makes me um, do what I do is that there's nothing better than seeing that enthusiasm and passion mirrored in the students that you teach. The look of joy on their faces when they experience that first birth and the, and the respect they have for the fact that this woman and this family allowed them to be part of this momentous event in our lives is awesome. When I look back to the way it was 15 years ago, we have come so far, thanks in part to the um, enthusiasm and energy of our younger division members such as Tracy and the um, vision of, of Valen, who really brought the fetal surgery program back to BC Women's many years ago when he first joined us. I met Tracy, what, almost 10 years ago now, uh, when uh, she came to do a, um, an elective as a resident. Really, I see us as a team when we're approaching the patients, and um, the patients are very familiar with both of us, so um, they will trust either one of us and our other colleagues who are involved in, in their care as, as non-surgeons in the, in the field. So we are part of a, of a large division in a large um, hospital setting um, and the medical students, the residents, uh, the obstetrician gynecologists and our colleagues perinatologists are all part of the big team that makes it happen as well as the nursing uh, locally. I've always wanted to be a physician. I was four year old watching Dr. Wilby on TV and I decided that's what I wanted to do. A good day, a good surgery, things went well. You walk home, you walk on clouds. Uh, a, a surgery that didn't go so well or a difficult case, um, you won't be as, as upbeat, but you try to find, uh, find the balance. Um, this being said, when we interact with people, it's important for us to keep in mind that for them, it is not just a regular day. It is their day. Uh, it is their time that everybody is important, and at the moment, they are the most important people in the world uh, for me. Every now and again, after uh, three days of on-call as a resident, you wonder why you decided to do that to yourself when you go back home and your roommate, who's in another specialty, has slept all weekend. Um, you just have to think at what kept you up at night, and uh, the doubts go away very quickly. So at BC Women's, we're fortunate to be a referral centre for the province for um, high-risk obstetrics. Uh, and in that, we've been able to develop the expertise in um, fetal interventions, uh, which would include the surgeries that Dr. Gagnon and I perform, um, such as laser ablation for communicating vessels in twin-twin transfusion syndrome. Um, I first discovered that something was wrong when we were, we, we were going away for the May long weekend to my family's cabin and we weren't there for five minutes and I realized that I was having contractions. And we started to time them and they were five minutes apart. And we knew at that point, I was only 23 weeks pregnant, that that was really not a good thing. Um, when I got to BC Women's Hospital, I came by ambulance, I was by myself, and my labor pains had gotten worse on the flight. And I recall coming in and I came in on the stretcher and I was probably crying and, you know, doing things that women do when they're in labor and I was very scared and there was a nurse and the first thing she did was she looked at me and she said, we are not having a birthday today. And I just like, that was the greatest thing. That's what I needed to hear and because at that point I thought that's what was happening and there was nothing we, we could have done and her just saying that just just made me stop and 
and think, okay, I'm in the right place, and they're gonna, they're gonna fix this, or try to. Um, they had an ultrasound machine, and she did a scan right away, and noticed um, why there was so much pressure, because um, Charlie had far too much fluid than she should have, and Abby had none, and um, she immediately said, I believe that these girls have twin to twin transfusion syndrome, and um, we need to figure out what we're going to do next. What we know ident in identical twins is that they always share a placenta, and in that placenta they do share blood vessels which allow them to exchange from one to the other. Um, sometimes it will be an even exchange and everybody stays happy. Some other times you'll have an uneven exchange and one of the fetus will give more than it receives back and that's when you get into twin to twin transfusion or one twin transfusing blood into the other one. Without surgery, twins with this condition have a very slim chance of survival. And the therapy that we're able to offer is um, essentially targeting the cause of the twin-to-twin, -twin, which is those vascular connections on the placenta. So using a fetoscope, which is a small laparoscopic instrument, we enter into the uterus, visualize those anastomoses, and are able to laser them. The idea being that we've separated the blood circulation of the two twins so they can no longer exchange. So generally our focus in the laser is very much on the vessels on the surface of the placenta, but occasionally the fetus will try and get into view as well. And uh, we'll sometimes see um, fingers and toes and, and even sometimes the face, which is really quite fun for the, the parents that are in the room with us to, to see. It was very emotional for us. Um, luckily we have a, a very supportive family and friends. Um, but also I think Dr. Pressy really helped me. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, when we met together, it seemed like she wasn't just my doctor. She seemed like she was my friend and we just had a connection. This particular family, I had uh, a, an even more unique experience in that I was pregnant when I met the couple and was at a very similar stage of pregnancy. Um, and so as we progressed through the pregnancy, um, Kristen and I kind of joked about being in the delivery suite at the same time and having the girls all at the same time. So the letter and the, the photos that Kristen sent me are sort of a daily reminder for me of, of why I do the job that I do, the tremendous impact that we can have on a, on a family um, and the impact that the families have on us as well and, and the ability to see these, these two young girls growing up. Um, reminds me daily about the job that I do and, and the opportunities that I'm given as a perinatologist here at BC Women's. Glassy skies of blue and I see clouds of white and the brightness of blue. I love you. I like the I love you. I love you. A baby too? Yeah. I like you. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> So what's your name? Abby. You're Abby. <laughs> and you are? Who are you? I'm Charlie. You're Charlie. <laughs> Excellent. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Saw you when you were inside mommy's tummy. <laughs> you were very, very tiny. I love you. I remember you well. Thank <laughs> you. Thank you very much again. Oh, will you come? Yeah. Oh, sweet. You guys just made you all better. Yeah, you guys look fabulous. What do you think, Brody? Has it been good with these sisters? Yeah. 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 <laughs>
dreams that you did too. Why, oh why? 